It's been a pretty major change, you know, relocating our life from Sydney to, to Cambodia and it's been a kind of a full-time job trying to deal with Dad's situation, trying to help him in whatever way we can. Worst case scenario is you could die in there. In June 2017, Australian filmmaker James Rickardson was arrested in Phnom Penh. The Cambodian government says he's a spy. The 69-year-old has now spent a year waiting for a trial and a chance to prove his innocence. Journalism is not a crime. Journalism is not espionage. The Cambodian constitution guarantees freedom of speech and I'd like to think that my Australian government would defend my right to freedom of speech also. James Rickardson has been coming to Cambodia for more than 20 years. Moved by the plight of local street kids, he embarked on a documentary project about Chanti, an impoverished Cambodian girl and her family. The project sparked a close friendship with Chanti's family and an enduring connection with the Southeast Asian nation. We still interact with this family regularly. And this is Rosa and she's now 17. It's wow. kind of amazing seeing her as a, a young child. You know, he never intended to kind of adopt a Cambodian family, but it just kind of happened, you know, bit, bit by bit. He wanted to help and he'd, he'd you know, he'd rent them a room, he put them in school, and then that, that's kind of what sparked his love of Cambodia and the Cambodian people. And one of my dad's best qualities is that he, he does, he, he cares about people and he's drawn to do everything he can to help. Mr. Rickardson has been vocal about human rights and democracy in Cambodia, but speaking out has made some powerful enemies. This time last year, the opposition party held a huge rally, which Mr. Rickardson filmed with a drone. While it is forbidden to fly a drone above Phnom Penh, others have been let off with a warning. A day later, the Australian filmmaker went for a stroll here along Phnom Penh's Riverside Boulevard. He was chatting with Chanti and his adopted Cambodian family when a group of policemen approached. In this handwritten letter to Malcolm Turnbull, James Rickardson describes exactly what happened next. Thirteen police officers surrounded him. They asked him to go to a local station and answer some questions. But they didn't have an arrest warrant, so Mr Rickardson refused. Eventually, though, they grabbed him and took him by force. He was accused of espionage, a charge that carries a possible 10-year sentence. My father is not a spy, 100% categorically not a spy. The Cambodian court has so far not said who James Rickardson is supposed to have been spying for. The investigating judge has focused on emails Mr Rickardson wrote to the opposition party. The Cambodian National Rescue Party has since been banned and its leader, Kem Sokar, is also in pre-trial detention, facing treason charges. Prime Minister Hun Sen has ruled Cambodia for 33 years, and with an election next month, he's overseeing a sweeping crackdown on political opposition and free speech. Hun Sen doesn't need to negotiate with the ones who are in jail. There's no need. The key is in the hand of Hun Sen. So do you think it's clear that James Rickardson's case is definitely linked to the wider political situation in Cambodia? For sure, but there's absolutely no evidence that he was involved in anything he was charged with. Licardo is a local human rights group that visits prisons. CC1 is not only the largest prison in Cambodia, but it's also extremely overpopulated. For one year, the 69-year-old has been held here at Correctional Centre 1, the men's prison just outside Phnom Penh. We can't film inside the prison, but we know that Mr Rickardson has been sharing a cell with 144 inmates. In reality, they sleep in shifts, but if they were to all lie down at the same time, this is the space that James Rickardson would have. He's a much taller man than me, but if I lie down here, you can see... <sighs> This really can't be very comfortable, night after night, for 12 months. He's got a whole variety of skin complaints. He's got a, a chest problem that we're not sure what it is. He's lost a lot of weight. You know, he's an old man, I mean, he's 69. If something goes seriously wrong with his health, where that's, we're all very scared about that. James Rickardson has been held for 12 months now without a trial. 
Is this kind of pre-trial detention common in Cambodia? Very. That's one of the key problems in, in Cambodia is the length of time that people spend in pre-trial detention. Under Cambodian law, a judge carries out an initial investigation before deciding whether to drop the charges or go to trial. The evidence has been gathered, the investigation has now been closed, and so we are in this critical juncture now where the, the Cambodian legal system can, can show us that justice can be done. From his cell, James Rickardson has written dozens of letters urging the Australian government to do more to intervene in his case. One Australian who's been through a similar ordeal is journalist Peter Grester, who spent 400 days imprisoned in Egypt. We haven't seen any clear evidence yet that uh, James is guilty of, of any, any offence that justifies this kind of, of imprisonment. Um, I feel for him. I know what it's like to be stuck in prison for such a long time uh, with an uncertain future. Prime Minister Hun Sen of Cambodia. How do you do, Prime Minister? Good to see you, sir. And, uh, my... Foreign Minister Julie Bishop has written to her Cambodian counterpart and consular officials have visited the prison 22 times. It's a delicate matter for Australia because of the $55 million refugee resettlement agreement, which has seen three refugees from Nauru come to live in Cambodia. The Australian government and Julie Bishop have been very keen to take a very prominent role in the Human Rights Council, talking about freedom of the press and, and other human rights issues. And if it wants to be taken seriously, it needs to step up and make sure that it it follows through on those kinds of principles when it comes to those states over which we have leverage. We very much welcome diplomatic representations being made by Julie Bishop and DFAT in this case. We, we, we need them and, and now is definitely the time where we kind of, we, we, we would hope to see more of that. Obviously it was a lovely... Um... For Jesse, looking after his father and keeping family members updated has uh, pretty much taken over his life. For now, there's not much more he can do, except try to keep his dad in good health and hope for the best. The best case scenario is that the judge announces that they, they don't have evidence against him and uh, he's not in any way guilty of the, the charges and he's set free.